Hi, I'm T.R. O'Neill. I'm an academic advisor in the computer graphics technology here in the Polytechnic Institute, and I'd like to welcome you brand new students for the class of 2024. Welcome to Purdue For Me Virtual. Uh, there are three important people that I think you should know, myself included, along with Heather Mayorga and Amy Griggs. We are the academic advisors that you will be working with throughout your time as a CGT major from freshman year all the way to senior year. I also want to point out Dr. Nate Hartman, who is our department head. He is also a very vital person who makes sure we have the right faculty members teaching the right courses and we have the right number of classes taught each semester. So your critical people are your three academic advisors and our department head. For many of you, you've never been to Purdue. And so it's a very big school. In fact, there are over 42,000 students who are here on campus. And so I'm gonna try and make Purdue and computer graphics small so that it's a manageable number for you to understand. 42,000 students is a very large number. I can't get my hands wrapped around what 42,000 students would be like. Um, so I'm gonna pare it down for you. But with that benefit of having such a large population, we are the fourth largest institute in the country with an international student population. We're very proud of that fact. So you can be very comfortable in the fact that we are globally known and the Purdue name carries throughout the world. We also want you to know that with that large population, there are over 800 student organizations on campus. So we want you to get involved. Yes, A's and B's are important in your classroom experience, but we also want you to get involved in an extracurricular activity so that that can tell a story about you when you're doing an interview so that you're not just a boring A to B student. We want you to tell a story about what your interest levels were outside of the classroom. So now that I've talked about the university, we've gone from 42,000 students. Now we're gonna talk about our college and the Polytechnic and we'll make it even smaller. So with the Polytechnic in itself, we graduate the largest number of bachelors of science degree in technology across the country. So with that, you will uh, know about six other programs that are housed within the college and we have 33 different degrees that we pro offer uh, for our majors across the college. And with that, we go from 42,000 students on campus. Within our college, we have just over 4,000 students who are in our majors in the Polytechnic. So now we're going from 42,000 down to 4,000. It's a much more manageable number, but let's make it even more personal. So now let's talk about computer graphics, which is your home department that you have a major within. So now we've gone from 42,000 students down to 615. So that's a much more manageable number. Now if we talk about undergraduate students, let's break it down even further. You divide that by four, and that's about 150 students per class. So now you have a better feel for what the population would be uh, here in our department, which is much smaller than the 42,000 students that we first started with. So you're going to know your classmates. Faculty members will know who you are you'll get to know them as well. So you'll have a name-to-name -name connection with people in your classroom and your instructors. With that, we have 72 students who are in the master's program. And I point that out because sometimes people think we're a terminal degree, but you can only get your bachelor's degree. But we have students getting their master's degree in computer graphics now uh, here on campus. And we have an additional 16 students who are working on their PhD in the college related to computer graphics. So you can get something beyond a bachelor's degree uh, with our computer graphics department. Uh, with that number, we have 26 full-time faculty members who are teaching uh, just over 50 CGT courses a year. You won't take all 50 of those computer graphics courses, but you'll take about half of those as either required courses or part of your major. And our goal is to make you, as we say, the prepared to be the nation's best practitioners, managers, and leaders in applied graphics. That's our goal for you. So huge campus of 42,000 with lots of benefits down to 615 students in our department. So it makes it much more manageable, makes it feel like we're home. All right, as some of you are considering your major and looking at other institutions, let me talk about what some other schools do with computer graphics and what we do at Purdue. So with some other institutions that you may be looking at, they put computer graphics in the liberal arts school. So they focus on the art part of the graphics. So that's more focused on aesthetics. They're more applied. They're very tool dependent. Uh, they're the users of the software and they have a lot more art theory. So some institutions put computer graphics in the liberal arts school. Other institutions across the country put computer graphics in the computer science field. 
And that's more analytical. Uh, it's more graphics byproducts. They're very theoretical. Uh, they're the developers of the software and their institutions and programs tend to be more math and science and programming heavy versus uh, the liberal arts schools, which are more art theory. So some schools put it in the liberal arts school, some put computer graphics in the computer science area. Then when we look at technology as a whole, what are those institutions using for computers? What are the software systems that they're using uh, for their different majors and the different classrooms that they're teaching? So once you see uh, the technology applied, then we want to look at the whole uh, picture for what's offered at Purdue. So when you look at the diagram provided for you, there's the art part, there's the computer science part, and there's the technology. And right in the middle of those three images, which is what we call the Venn diagram, is what we think we do at Computer Graphics Technology here at Purdue. We're going to give you some of the art so you can be artistic. We're going to give you some of the computer science so that you're programmatic and theoretical. And then we're going to couple that with the technology that we use in our classrooms to put that all together to give you a nice balance. So depending upon what your learning style is, you need to decide what's the best choice for you in terms of institutions that you want to choose from. If you're more of an art person, maybe computer graphics per isn't for you at Purdue. If you're more of a programmer, maybe computer graphics isn't for you at Purdue. Uh, but we try to find that sweet spot and we think we have a nice balance for all students who are interested in our areas. All right, we offer eight different majors in computer graphics. So I'm going to cover all eight of them in different categories. Uh, the first area we're going to talk about is what I would call the entertainment field. And that would include animation, game studies, and visual effects. With those three areas, we call that the entertainment side of our uh, majors. And so with visual effects, you're looking at creating interesting visual effects that happen within movies, television, advertising, where you make an environment completely different than what you want the viewer to see. And you may make objects that aren't in the room actually appear in the room on the screen. Uh, we also have animation, which are the popular uh, Disney and Pixar uh, productions that you might see uh, movies, uh, which is where our students like to want to graduate for. And then you have the video games uh, and studies. Um, all of these three are the entertainment fields. The one thing I point out about these different majors is, is that if you are a game studies major, uh, the important part to realize is that in your sophomore and senior year, you will have a portfolio review where our faculty members will have you in a classroom and they will work with you on your portfolio throughout your time with the game studies. And there's certain criteria that you have to review and if you meet all those criteria, then you can move on to the next level of games courses the next semester. If you don't meet the criteria, then discussions might happen of, you know, you need to improve this, try this course again, or maybe game studies isn't for you. The goal of our faculty in game studies is to create a quality graduate in games and not just a mass quantity number of graduates. So it's only the game study students who have to do a portfolio review. Right now I'd like to show you a small video that we have that's been put together by one of our graduate students, uh, previous CGT majors who have gone on and worked in uh, professional careers and show you the clips of just certain productions that they have worked in. In the video clip, you'll see uh, the name of the production, the movie, the game. You'll see the name of the graduate, the year that they graduated from Purdue, and the title and the company that they were working for during that production.
So that's our entertainment area. Now let's move on to what I would call the computing area. And those three areas would be web programming and design, user experience, and data visualization. Web programming and design, simply stated, is exactly what it sounds like. If you're a web development major, your purpose is to make sure websites are active, live, and work appropriately. Not only will you do that, you're gonna make sure that links inside your uh, websites are going to the right place, that there are no breakdowns. You're gonna learn about location of images, text, font, colors, all that exciting stuff. That's the front end, but then you'll also be doing back-end issues of when you build a website, how does it look on your desktop? How does it look on your laptop? How's it gonna look on your phone? All three of those aspects have to be working appropriately for the user to have um, a good experience. And that leads me into user experience. Uh, this is more of the psychology behind computing. So as users are using products, they have to make sure that they're interactive, that they're valuable, and they're useful for the customer. So students in user experience don't necessarily uh, use a specific software tool, but they're gonna be working with what I call the um, post-it notes and whiteboard process of solving a problem and getting the right product out there. My best example is if you've ever used an app on your phone because somebody suggested it and you start using it and it's wonky, it's buggy, it times out, it's not very flowing for you, flowing in a good way, you're not going to use it because it's not good for you. So probably user experience was not applied when designing that app, so you stop using it. So we want you to be a good uh, user of softwares and tools so that the product is good for the end user. And then we'll talk about data visualization. So that's taking large amounts of data and putting it in a visual format to tell a story in a very quick format. And so with that, um, you have lots of information that's out there that people are collecting. And so we wanna make sure that you're telling that story in a very uh, formal way that's very quick and simple. And I've got a quick example I wanna show you uh, that some student created and I think it'll tell a story very quickly. So as you can see in this example for data visualization, a student chose to take the weight and height of NFL players from its inceptions in the early 1900s all the way up to uh, the mid 2010s. And as you can see, the graph tells a very visual story and it's a simple XY graph, so it's not very uh, uh, deep in detail, but it really shows a story of how players have changed throughout time from their height and their weight and how that's transitioned into a different type of football player uh, in the NFL. So a very simple graphic detail that just shows you what data visualization can be. But you can do all kinds of things uh, with data and information from all aspects of any company or organization that needs to tell a story about data. Those are the areas what I would call our computing. So now I've talked about our entertainment area and our computing area. Now I want to talk about our design areas. The first one we're going to talk about is virtual product integration. And this is to enhance uh, 2D and 3D modeling in the manufacturing and marketing area as it relates to products. And we do simulation and rendering there. If you've taken a computer-aided design course or a CAD course in high school, this is kind of what this field does. It's a way to do 2D and 3D modeling in the engineering field. I'm going to show you a very quick image of what one of our students created just so you can get an idea of what this major has to offer. As you can see in this image here, this is a simple lawnmower motor uh, that some student has rendered. They put it in a 3D format so you can easily see it. They've rotated it on an axis so you can see all aspects of it. And then they've also gone into uh, an, a motion where you can actually colorize this. So you can actually see different parts of that motor. And so this might be good for manufacturing, it may be good for assembly, it may good, be good for disassembly or even maintenance. So you can see all aspects of that motor as it relates to the product life cycle. So the idea behind this major is you may design the product from start to finish. So you're gonna take it from a paper design, you're going to create it, uh, you're gonna put it into a computer design, it's gonna be manufactured, it's going to be built, and then it may be sold and then put into production. It's gonna be put into operation. It's gonna be need to maintain. And then eventually it's gonna be recycled. And so the life cycle from start to finish is what product life cycle management or virtual product integration is going to do for this major. 
The next area of our design would be building information modeling. So again, it's two-dimensional and three-dimensional designs related to construction. This could be residential, it could be commercial. So depending upon what your interests are, you can pick which area you wanna go into. So I'm gonna show you the life cycle of how building information modeling works for this particular major. First off, students are going to understand what two-dimensional sketching is or two-dimensional drawings. And what you have available now are sketches of what a house might look like or a building might be looking like. And then you put it into a software system and you actually design it to make blueprints. So these are electronic blueprints so that you can actually see what the measurements, what the structure and what the design of that facility is going to look like uh, as it's related to the official build. Next, you're going to understand what three-dimensional modeling is. You're going to take that design and you can rotate it in the software system that they have available for you and you're going to make that building actually grow. Uh, it's going to be from the outside, from the exterior, all the way down below ground so you can see the entire operation of what that facility might look like. And you can even do individual rooms so you know what each room of that building is going to look like uh, from a dimensional standpoint and what the actual usage of that room is going to be. Next we go into four dimensional, so that's scheduling and ordering of construction. So as you're designing uh, maybe a complex or you're designing one building, you want to make sure you're scheduling things from the first building that goes up to the last one that goes up in what order. You're also going to be scheduling products to be delivered to that site. If you've ever built a house, you know that you don't want to have windows delivered before the foundation is poured because that's poor timing because the windows aren't ready to be put in yet. So construction and scheduling is very critical in that fourth dimension. Next, we're going to talk about fifth dimension of construction, and that's the estimation of materials, the total cost of the construction. So with the software systems that you'll use, you can make estimations of cost. If you're going to be using steel, wood, concrete, what are the cost differences? So you can make those adjustments. So that's a very useful tool in the fifth dimension. Next, construction will go into what's called the sixth dimension. And so those are through examples. So as you're building that construction product, whether it's a building or a house, uh, how does that building impact the environment that it's being put in? Uh, the construction of a building in California is different than the construction of a building in Indiana, so you need to understand what soil content and how that uh, building is going to be sitting. What's the wind energy? What's the energy usage? Uh, how does that stand up to solar? What's the footprint going to be environmentally? So the sixth dimension is critical in the construction field. Lastly, they're going to go into what they call uh, clash detection or the spell checking of construction. So it's putting all aspects of the building into one uh, system to make sure that uh, nothing is going to clash with one another. Construction business, usually the contractors don't talk to each other. You'll see electricians come in one day, plumbers come in another, the HVAC system comes in a third day, and they don't get to see or talk to each other. So you want to make sure that when you're putting things together, the plumbers don't come in where they think a toilet's supposed to go and there's an actual ventilation shaft there. So it's making sure that they've got all the pieces in the right place. And as construction evolves nowadays, uh, blueprints change on occasions. And so electronic blueprints at the work site are more critical than the paper ones. So you'll see that uh, in industry now. So not only can you uh, do building information modeling, but then you can work in marketing if you choose to do that so. So these are just a simple sample of some marketing brochures of residential complex. So you can see interior uh, designs of what these places might look like. You can do floor plans and blueprints uh, for a marketing company. Um, we have interior design students who are part of liberal arts who take these courses because if they're going to design the inside of a building, the instructors in liberal arts want them to know how the building is created and the dimensions and how they can actually build them so they understand the full impact of how their interior designs are working with the construction of that facility. Lastly, this is sort of a fun project. Um, a couple of years ago, Purdue was big on green roofs. And so uh, a couple of our computer graphics students who were in the building information modeling major said, hey, we can do something with Kanoi Hall. And this is Kanoi Hall, the home of computer graphics and many of the polytechnic majors. And so uh, if you've ever been to Kanoi or seen Kanoi, it's got a stair step, uh, stair step roof design and right now these roofs are not being utilized so the students came up with an idea and said hey we can make our roofs green and actually interactive for our students and staff members so they sort of created this idea took it to the faculty they liked it it went up to the dean's office it started to go through administration uh, it became a really great idea until uh, cost became an issue and if you'll notice that there are access doors on each floor and this building was built in the mid 80s 
and uh, accessibility was not a problem back then or an issue and so the doors that go onto the floor are about two feet off the ground so you have to step over the threshold to get on the floor and once the AD accessibility uh, costs started to go into this, this was not a feasible project, unfortunately. So um, it's not going to ever happen. But I like it because our students got creative and they did their own thing uh, with one of their own buildings that they knew here on campus. So I still kind of keep this in our back pocket because I think it's a fun project for our students to see. So those are our eight majors that we offer here in computer graphics at Purdue. Now let's talk about some of the requirements that you're going to have to have once you're here on campus and the things you're going to have to complete to graduate from our program in four years. So we offer the Cornerstone Certificate. If you've ever been to Purdue or you know people who come to Purdue or you have friends that are here, there are the traditional English composition and speech courses that are required. In computer graphics, we have embraced and we offer the Cornerstone as a requirement for your graduation. And that's a piece of liberal arts that is important for all students in STEM. So STEM is science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, and you are the T in STEM. So we think it's important for you to have more liberal arts in your background. So you're going to be taking a couple of liberal arts classes that are going to enhance your communication skills, your knowledge about current events, and sociology and things of that nature. Not only will you take the two core classes of SCLA 101 and 102, but then you'll take additional English and communication classes sometime in your junior and senior year to enhance those skills as well. Everybody at Purdue gets to take two science classes. I say gets to because sometimes students don't want to take science classes, so I try to put a positive spin on that. With the science course requirements, many of you will be taking physics, so you'll have to take physics as one of your science requirements, but then your other science course could be uh, astronomy or a nutrition course or it could be in, uh, entomology if you like bugs so you will choose your second science course. The great thing about computer graphics at Purdue and I think with all the majors in the Polytechnic is is that we don't make you take your science and your humanities and your math right away and later on in your sophomore junior year you get to take your major classes. We are going to put you in major courses every single semester that you're with us. So every year you're going to be taking three or four CGT courses that are going to be related to your major and with the department. And I think that's a great experience for you to balance the fun classes in CGT with the not so great classes of maybe the science courses that you don't want to take. Every student in computer graphics gets to take the senior capstone experience. So every student is going to go into intro courses in their fall semester of their freshman year. Then you start to branch out into your major classes in sophomore, junior year. And then that senior year, we're going to bring all those majors back together in the capstone course. With this capstone requirement in the fall semester, you're going to learn about projects that you want to work on. You're going to build teams uh, that are related to that project. You're going to have a faculty uh, advisor for that, plus your project sponsor that could be someone from industry. It could be a faculty member, a staff member, or someone from the community who wants something completed. The fall semester is designed to work on that, plus to come up with ideas of what your project is going to look like be, and do some research. The spring semester, which is happening now, our students are designing projects, they're completing their projects, they're doing testing, and eventually in the middle of April, they're going to come together and do a final project presentation and present their solution to the project that has been proposed to them. And this is probably the most exciting time of the year when you get to see seniors explore their opportunities and the knowledge that they've learned uh, throughout their time at Purdue. The great thing about this is it's not major specific. So it's not a games group and an animation group and a building information modeling group. It's a collaboration of students together. A great example I have of that is how many people have thought of games and nursing in the same breath? I didn't until I saw a project happen last year where our nursing department here on campus needed some help in creating a virtual teaching lab. And so on campus there is a lab that the nursing students have to use and they have to go in and find all the things that are wrong with that room, sort of a checks and balances so they know what they're doing. That lab probably costs about $250,000 to $500,000 and there's so many nursing students that can use that room at the same time. So it's very booked, it's overused, and it's a lot of money. So what our students have done working with the nursing department is they have created a virtual hospital room so that nursing students can visually go in 
and find all the issues that are related and correct them. And they can do this anytime they want to. So in conjunction with the nursing department, we had games students, we had building information modeling students, and we had animation students all working together to create this virtual hospital room for nursing students to go in and test anytime they wanted to. So now, if you have a pair of VR goggles, you don't have to wait to sign up for a time to go into the physical lab. You can just go into the virtual lab and do this as many times as you want to. The goal then is for the nursing school to be able to teach remotely so that they can teach students in another country how to use a nursing lab and a hospital room all in the same environment because everybody's getting the same information. So a great example of what our capstone classes can do with multiple students from different majors working together. So that's computer graphics in a, in a nutshell and the requirements that you need once you're here on campus. So what's next for you? Obviously, you need to say that you're coming to Purdue. If this is the institution for you, you need to pay your deposit by at least May 1st. And as we just found out recently, that deadline has been extended to June 1st. Sooner is better than later, but if you need to wait until June 1st to make that decision on your deposit, please do so. Once you pay your deposit in my Purdue, you will be then able to sign up for what's called STAR. And STAR stands for Summer Transition Advising and Registration. That's a time where you and your family members will come to Purdue campus for a day. You will do a university and college welcome. There'll be interactive uh, sessions for you throughout the day. And then in the afternoon, you will meet with myself and Heather and Amy, and we will plan out your fall semester classes so we know what courses you're gonna be taking beginning in August of 2020. So that's what STAR is. We also have what's called virtual STAR, so if you cannot come to campus, then you need to work with the Student Success Office to be able to change from STAR to virtual STAR so that you can do that program online. Many of you take, are taking AP classes, so we want you to continue with those AP courses. We want you to take those tests for AP, and when you get that test, we want you to make sure that you mark Purdue or whatever institution you're applying to and put that on your test application so that those institutions as well as Purdue can get those scores so we know the full picture of what your senior year uh, academics has been related to AP testing. Many of you may have taken junior level AP classes and probably a year ago you weren't thinking about Purdue or any college at all. So what we want you to do is once you know what school you're going to, we want you to go back to the college board and ask them to send your junior year AP scores to Purdue or what other institution you're planning on applying for. So again, we can get a full picture of what your academics are in terms of completed courses that count towards college. So that's AP course. Some of you will be taking dual credit classes and a dual credit course is where you're taking a high school class in your high school, but it's also counting for college credit at some university or college. Once you're finished with your course this coming spring, we want you to go to that institution that you've got dual credit with, and we want you to ask them to send a transcript to the Purdue Admissions Office. That institution will then send a transcript to Purdue, and then we can translate that information into what a Purdue course would count towards from the dual credit you earned while you were in high school. So that way we can have AP credit and we can have dual credit in your transcript so we know what courses you've completed and how that's going to help you um, in what courses we need to help you take for the fall semester. Alex is related to mathematics. Alex is an online national uh, test that students will take to find out where they place in mathematics. Some of you may take in dual credit or may take an AP credit in high school for math and if you score high enough you may not take math at all at Purdue. This Alex placement test is related to your SAT and ACT scores so depending upon what those test results are, depends on whether you take the Alex test or not. We as advisors will reach out to you in late May, early June, advising you to take the Alex placement test prior to your coming to campus for STAR. The Alex placement test is not a test where you want four or five of your favorite friends to come over to your house with graphing calculators to help you with the test to score as high as possible. Because if you do that, your calculus score may be really high. And as an advisor, we're gonna say, wow, you're really good at math, let's put you in calculus. And you're in the back of your mind saying, I've never taken calculus in my life, I'm not ready for that. So it's not a test where you want your friends to help you with. 
It's a dynamic test where you take the questions and depending upon your answer, the next question is different based upon each of your answers from the previous question. So it's dynamic and sort of finds your strengths and weaknesses based upon how you answer the previous question. Then that will give us a really true identity of what your math skills are like. If you don't feel like you did very well in the first test, there are learning modules within Alex. You can repeat the test up to three times prior to your coming to campus for a star. And then the last thing you can do is sign up for what's called Boiler Gold Rush. That is our fall orientation program that the university puts on, and that's where students get to move into their residence hall a week before classes begin. You get acclimated to campus, you learn the histories and traditions about Purdue, you'll know where your classrooms are, and it's a great experience just to get to know other students from across the country and across the world who are brand new Boilermakers just like you. So that's computer graphics at our eight majors, one of which you have applied for and have been accepted for here at Purdue. Again, I'm T.R. O'Neill. I'm one of the academic advisors in our CGT department. If you have any questions, feel free to go to our computer graphics website on the Polytechnic page and find academic advisors and look for myself, Heather Mayorga, or Amy Griggs and reach out to us by email and we'll be glad to respond back to you as time permits. Thank you. Have a great rest of your spring.